We begin today with the story of a little known think tank here in Washington, D.C. that has been successfully pushing legislation in states all over the country that overwhelmingly harms African Americans and others. But it's also the story of what happens when people fight back against injustice. The organization is the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. Now, what ALEC does is create conservative laws for state legislatures to pass. Now, you may have heard of ALEC during coverage of the Trayvon Martin case and the Stand Your Ground law in Florida. Stand Your Ground was a law pushed by ALEC and has been passed in 16 states. And this week, the Tampa Bay Times published a story of Stand Your Ground cases in Florida and found this not surprising stat. Defendants claiming to stand your ground are more likely to prevail if the victim is black. 73% of those who killed a black person faced no penalty compared to 59% of those who killed a white. But Alec is responsible for much more that affects our community than stand your ground. You know those voters ID and voter suppression laws around the country that affects people of color? Well, those laws were largely written by Alec. And the laws privatizing prisons which then create a demand for prisoners filled by young black men. Those laws largely written by Alec. This organization is heavily supported by the right wing oil billionaire, the Koch brothers and many large corporations, many that you are familiar with. Alec has had a free ride for over 30 years, but this year people are fighting back and three of the folks leading the charge are here today on Washington watch. They are, Judith Brown Dianis, co-director of the Advancement Project, Rashad Robinson, executive director of Color of Change, and Angela Rye, executive director and general counsel for the Congressional Black Caucus. All right, folks, welcome to Washington Watch. Now, what's interesting when you talk about Alec, uh, when all of a sudden, Rashad, when you begin to see the number of major corporations, and we often see who sponsor major black events, yep. all of a sudden people say, wait a minute, I, why are these folks in this organization it really was a, related to taxes and businesses. That was the initial deal, right? That was part of the initial deal, but taxes and business also relates to social policy. You can't cut taxes or cut spending and, it doesn't, and, and say it doesn't impact the way that people live and experience their government and their lives every day. But Walmart, for instance, which is the most recent company to pull out, actually wrote the Stand Your Ground laws along with the NRA. Walmart is the largest seller of long guns in this country. So this was part of their go-to-market strategy to get more guns in people's hands. So they wrote the Stand Your Ground law that they, and pushed it in Florida and then 25 other states around the country. And so Walmart leaving this past week was a huge victory because they actually chaired the committee that not only gave us Stand Your Ground, but also voter ID and voter suppression laws. Now, now this wasn't a case where you had folks who were just sort of members of an organization. I mean, they were literally involved in the policy making uh, decisions. What other companies are we talking about that folks might be familiar with? Well now um, we're up to 18 companies that have pulled completely out of Alex. So some of those that have pulled out are Mars, um, Reed, who also is the parent company of LexisNexis. There are several companies. Um, I know that there are still Verizon and AT&T that are members, um, but I think that one of the things we should focus on is the fact that there's now a task force completely disbanded because of um, the pressure that Rashad organization, Rash Rashad's organization and others have put on um, Alec. Yeah, I was glad to hear that Amazon.com finally pulled right. out due to, to Color of Change's work because I just got a Kindle for Mother's Day. <laughs> so I was a little worried I wasn't going to be able to use it. But I mean, I think because we're seeing this pushback, and I think the point that you've mentioned about voter ID laws is really important because what Alec does is that it sits down with these corporations, corporate interests like the Koch brothers, who've been trying to basically take over the politics of our country so that they can rule for political interests really meeting their own corporate interests, right? And so what they do is they craft this legislation and then they send it out as a template for legislation, for legislators to pass across the country. So, you know, in 2011, we saw 34 states taking up voter ID bills and they were copycat laws. The anti-immigration laws that we saw passed in Arizona and Alabama are the brainchild of Alex. So, you know, it does, it's not just about standing your ground, but it's everything that impacts our daily lives. What other kind of uh, policy issues uh, this task force was working on or trying to implement? Well, this task force dealt a lot with privatized prisons, mandatory minimum sentencing. Um, they were working on a wide range of laws that, that 
kind of would impact our daily lives. But, but this, while this committee has disbanded, the chairman of this committee actually, when it disbanded, said they're just going to move these laws, um, these policies, to other committees. And Alec is still working on a wide range of laws. We know when the state legislatures come back into to session after the summer and then after the election that we have to stay vigilant. And at Color of Change, we know that, this, that we've had great success over the last couple of months with getting corporations to remove. But this message for these corporations is still clear that any law that Alex pushes carries the same taint, carries the same brush that Stand Your Ground has, that discriminatory voter ID laws, that they're not going to be able to get away with it. Some of these folks were, uh, were, were so cute that literally the Alec uh, language was in the actual bills, including the mission statement as well. They, they just simply uh, copy and paste it. They copied and pasted. That actually happened in Florida, uh, where um, a, a legislator submitted a piece, a piece of legislation that was Alec and forgot to remove it off the stationery in the template. I mean, and it's, it's important for us to understand that, that this really was a concerted effort, right? You bring in corporate interests, you decide to pass these laws that are going to meet your need to make money. Right. But at the same time, with the, voting, the voter ID stuff, it's like, okay, we can make money. And we can roll back voting rights so then people won't have a say when we come for their, for their homes through foreclosures, when we come and sell them mm -hmm. guns. They have no say because we've done away with their voting rights. And I think beyond the morality of the actual policies that they're advocating for, we need to talk about the legality of what they're doing. This is a 501c3 not-for-profit entity. I know the rules and restrictions because I have one. Um, when you talk about a substantial um, part test for lobbying efforts and that kind of thing, the fact that you are actually doing the work of a legislator is, is beyond an ethical violation. Um, we are working hard to even try to to challenge their 501c3 exempt status. So, uh, so, so what does that entail in terms of are the attorneys working on that? Are they going to the IRS and say they should be investigated? There's an entity called Common Cause that has actually filed a complaint. Um, I think on another hand, on the congressional side, there are members who would work towards hearings and reviewing their 501c3 status. It's really unheard of for the, IR the IRS to revoke a 501c3, right. but I think this is one of those egregious well, There was cases. a whistleblower that actually turned over thousands yeah. of documents, of years of documents. In fact, n nonprofits can do a certain amount of lobbying, 501c3s, but actually Alec, for the last 40 years, has claimed zero. Okay. Zero on their tax forms in terms of lobbying while pushing, while claiming on their website of having a track record of pushing and getting laws passed all around the country. And so they've got emails, Common Cause has emails back and forth between legislators and, and corporations on the actual Blackberries and emails of the legislators that are being paid for through um, our tax dollars. And so in many places, in many cases, what's actually happened is corporations have been able to give tax exempt money and get tax tax breaks to give money to Alec that, that, comes, that comes away from us, and while Alec goes out and does something illegal by pushing these laws. And so this common cause lawsuit hopefully moves forward, but it's also, um, it's also a clear message to these corporations that we will no longer have business as usual in Washington, that, that there's going to be challenges to the influence of money in politics. I don't think the, the average person really understands um, what takes place in, in the nation's mm -hmm. capital when you have these groups mm -hmm. that you've never heard of, right. you've never seen their leadership, That's right. uh, you, don't, you don't really understand how they were created, That's right. uh, whether it's uh, Koch brothers or others who are mm -hmm. funding organizations. I mean, right. Republicans and conservatives have criticized George Soros for funding mm -hmm. groups as well. But you sort of have these, these shadowy organizations right. who are working behind the scenes, and yeah. you think is that legislature or a, le a legislator, or you right. think it's someone like that, right. but it's really these kind of right. groups who really pull the levels of right. power right. all across the country in D.C. and state capitals. They are, I mean, they're the wizard behind the curtain, right? right? They are pulling the strings. They are making the decisions that rule our daily lives. And they're flying under the radar. They don't come on TV. You do not see anyone from right. Alec on TV. And there's a reason, because they can get away with it because there's no transparency. But finally, what has happened is that the cover has been taken off, and we are exposing them. And now people know who they are, what they've been up to, and the people who've been funding them. And yeah. the people who've been funding them are the same people Angela, that we give money comment. to. I think therein lies the problem, though. You're saying that there's no transparency, and that's exactly what a 501c3 is supposed to do. You're supposed to be transparent. So well, that's I'll tell problem. you what, we've made multiple calls to Alec to discuss this issue. Mm -hmm. And to your point, they refuse to come on. Mm -hmm. yeah.
folks, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Thanks.